Good evening and welcome. Our order of service tonight, since this is Good Friday, is a little bit different than the ordinary. And you have the spoken order of service, I'm sure, in front of you that you received as you came in. You may notice that we begin actually not with the opening hymn, but instead we begin with the cross procession. So I will go to the rear of the church. After the prelude is played by Naomi, then I will ask you to rise and the cross will be brought forward with three pauses as mentioned in the worship folder. Later on in the service, we are going to be reading the Passion of Our Lord this time according to St. John. Uh, he's the one that's appointed for being read in the church, and they've been doing it for, oh, probably almost 2,000 years on Good Friday. And then we conclude the service in a special way as well. At the, at the end of the closing hymn, the lights will darken, and we do ask that you leave the church in silence so that you can return on Easter morning for services with uh, an enhanced kind of joyfulness to you. So we will leave in, uh, quietly and in darkness. Naomi. rise. Behold the Lamb of God, Lord have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. O God, Father in heaven, O Son of God, Redeemer of the world, O God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Lamb of God, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us, Hear our prayer, O Lord. You may be seated. We speak from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? O oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. In you our fathers put their trust. They cried to you and were saved. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men. All who see me mock me. He trusts in the Lord, let the Lord rescue him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. From my birth I was cast upon you. Do not be far from me. Many bulls surround me. Roaring lions tearing their prey. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. I can count all my bones. They divide my garments among them. But you, O Lord, be not far off. Deliver my life from the sword. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. I will declare your name to my brothers. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. Posterity will serve him. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn. We sing him 438.
lesson is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, beginning at the last verse. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they shall see. <coughs> Excuse me. And that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. But you, O Lord, have mercy on us. The reading of the Passion of our Lord according to St. John. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, he drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, 
I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. We sing hymn 436, verses 1 and 2. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. 
Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. And Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabata. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. We sing hymn 453, verses 1 through 4.
they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Here ends the reading of the Passion of our Lord according to St. John. We sing him 452 verses 1 through 5.
it is finished. When Jesus spoke those words, he wasn't just saying, this is the, <clears throat> this is the end of me, as if there were nothing else to do but give in to his enemies and die. His last words weren't a final surrender to the power of Satan, as if to say, you've won, I'm done for. These words don't tell us that Jesus was dead now, and that's all there is to it. He's finished, and so is everything that he stood for and promised during his earthly life. It's fini, over and done with. No. All those who heard the word, it is finished, the servants, those who offered sacrifices at the temple, the buyers and sellers at the marketplace, the artists and parents and children understood that Jesus is saying that his job of saving the world has been completed. He has finished the task and nothing, nothing can be added to what has been done. Jesus has paid the price in full. He has canceled all the debt that we humans owed. Reconciliation is finished. The word reconciliation talks about bringing them back together when people are against one another. Recall a time when you have done something that has hurt someone else, and because of that, your friendship with that person has been damaged. A gap has come between you, and you felt uneasy when you met that person in fact, you may even have tried avoiding to running into them. All of that doesn't change until you put aside your differences and friendship is then restored. The terrible gap exists between God and people because of our sin and evil. In the movie, The Grand Canyon, a tow truck driver is threatened by five troublemakers as he tries to rescue a terrified motorist. He says, man, the world ain't supposed to work like this. Maybe you don't know that, but this ain't the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be able to do my job without asking if I can, and that dude is supposed to be able to wait with his car without you ripping him off. Everything's supposed to be different than what it is here. And he's right. Everything is supposed to be different. God created a perfect, beautiful world, and he made people to live in harmony and in peace with one another, but then look what happened. We say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing to others because of sin in our hearts and minds from the very day that we are born. Greed and selfishness destroy friendship and separate people and nations. That tow truck driver hit the nail on the head when he said, man, the world ain't supposed to work like this. Jesus died on the cross to make the world work right again, to get rid of the power of sin to condemn us. His death bridged the deep gulf between God and us, Salvation was finished when Jesus cried out, it is finished from the cross. He has won forgiveness for all people. Nothing else needs to be done. And that's why we call today Good Friday. It certainly wasn't a good day for Jesus, but it was a good day for us. We call today Good Friday because the cross is proof of the powerful love that God has for each and every one of us. No one would do something like that unless he truly loved us. Love does some very powerful and strange things. The teenager Arthur Hinckley lifted a farm tractor with his bare hands. He wasn't a weightlifter but his best friend, 18-year-old Lloyd, was pinned under the tractor. Arthur heard Lloyd screaming for help, and Arthur somehow lifted the tractor enough for Lloyd to wiggle out. His love for his best friend somehow enabled him to do 
what would normally be impossible. There's a story of a priest who offered his life in place of a teenage boy in Nazi Germany. His offer was accepted, and the priest died to save the boy's life. And then there was the young soldier who had been condemned to death by Oliver Cromwell, the dictator that ran England for a number of years. The man was to be shot at the ringing of the curfew bell. His fiancée climbed the bell tower and tied herself to the clapper of the giant bell so that it would not ring. And when the bell did not ring, soldiers went to investigate, and they found the girl battered and bleeding from being bashed against the sides of the bell. Cromwell was so impressed by her love for the young man that he was pardoned. Because of love, people do extraordinary things for others. They give us a glimpse, a small glimpse, at the kind of love that God has for us. God the Father sent his dearly loved son to be treated cruelly, nailed to a cross, and to die. And he knew that from even before he created us on the first day of creation. He could have rescued him and cursed those who were treating him so brutally. But God did all of this, suffered all of this, because of his love for us. St. Paul writes, God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. We were God's enemies, but he made us his friends through the death of his son, Romans 5. Jesus died for us even though we don't deserve it. Now I can see how horrible sin is. Now I can see what sin does to God. It puts him on a cross. We ought to exclaim, oh no, is this what my sin did? The hymn we sing asks, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. From this time on, I cannot ever again take sin lightly. I must hate and detest sin with the passion, with Christ's passion, for his death won the victory over sin for me. As St. Paul says, or asks again in Romans 6, how can we who died to sin with Christ still live in it? I cannot do that to the one who loved me and gave himself for me. If God is the person on the central cross of Calvary, then we have to stand in awe and adoration. To think that he loved us enough to suffer all that for sinners like us. We look at the figure on the cross and see a thorn-crowned brow, a sweaty face, bleeding hands and feet. As Isaiah said, there's no beauty in him. He is despised and rejected. We want to turn our faces away from him. The look is too horrible to take. And yet is for us. And so there is something about him in his suffering that draws us to him. We cannot look away. We must not look away. This is God. This is the king. This is the Christ reigning in triumph from the tree. On that cross hangs the Savior of the world, and that is what makes this death different from all others. His death includes all others, so that all others can have life in him. Jesus' announcement, it is finished, is clear and simple. Jesus has completed his task. The reason why he came as a human has been fulfilled so that you and I can have forgiveness and salvation. That's what's finished. And that's why this is such a good Friday for us. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We rise for the traditional reproaches as printed in the worship folder.
Is it of no concern to you who pass by, if only you would look and see? Is there any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger? Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you delivered your Redeemer to be scourged. For I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross. O oh, my people. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink, O my people. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me. What more could I have done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God, O my people? may be seated for the offering. rise for the prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us pray. Merciful Father, whose dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, rose victor over death and the grave, we remember with thanksgiving your faithful people who have trusted in Christ, 
whose tears are gone and whose sorrows you have turned to joy. And we humbly implore you to strengthen us in the confident hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works proceed, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended by you, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.